Imagine growing up and being exposed to these images as representations of what a nun is. The rulers, the black habits, the stereotypical sisters, absent of individuality and mindlessly grouped together as symbols of strict faith. But this couldn't be further from the truth. What would make you choose to have this one thing that you kind of built your life around, you know? <laughs> if it's, I mean, an event or just kind of stuff that you were raised and always wanted to pursue or, mm -hmm. yeah, like what scenario would make you want to do that? The thing happened in our family. My dad had cancer and I was head of Girl Scouts in the city of Beloit, the senior Girl Scout troop, and the woman that worked with us called and, and then I just, she, I said, well, Dad had cancer, come back. And she said, well, God works in strange, mysterious ways. And I went back, I was wiping the dishes, and I went, I'm supposed to be a sister. And then I told my parents, I had a date that night, and told my parents we got home from seeing the birds. And <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the birds, birds in the moonlight bowling. So it was like three in the morning I got in. And I said to my parents, I have something to tell you, I'm going to have it next year. And my dad said over my dead body, and he rolled over and went back to sleep. And he refused to give permission for a while. So eventually they decided I was serious about it. And then they thought I'd change my mind. It was a choice between going to the Peace Corps or joining the condom, which may sort of, you know, people may laugh at that, but, mm -hmm. but the reality of it was I saw them as similar at the time, you know, um, and I just, I, I, I don't know really what made me come down on the side of going into the community, except I knew at that point that they went all over the country and they, um, traveled to a lot of places and they were educated and I really was interested in education. So, you know, I kind of played around with all those different ideas uh, um, as well as not doing any of that. And I don't know, I just, it was my experience. I just wanted to do something um, really active in the world. And so I chose the convent. I really want to help. Mm -hmm. I don't like what I see. Yeah. I think uh, that combined with, you know, my basic sense of spirituality and so forth said, let's do this with a group of committed women. You know, they had their mission statements and so forth, and it's like, oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. I like this. I want to belong to something larger than what I am to be able to move this. What do you and the sisters at the congregation do in your free time? First of all, that assumes I have free time. <laughs> <laughs> I like to read, and um, so sisters and I play bridge at a time, and we go to movies together. And I think that, especially with working with the doctoral program, there's always a lot of reading and, and that to do for, for those students. So um, certain TV shows I like, I like spending time with my family at vacation times. I love to go to movies, especially to Oshkosh, where the reclining seats are. And we go to movies, I go, I have a good friend who lives in the building next to me, who's one of our sisters. So we do, we exercise every morning together and we go do different things together. So if I'm not here, I'm either at home or at the movie theater or at the mall. I like to go shopping also. So I like to do just normal things. So when I think of nuns, I typically think of them in prayer. Um, so what is it you actually do? The typical notion that we sit back and, you know, we pray all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be very unsatisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago, we turned from um, some volunteer work uh, on the um, Mexican border in McAllen, Texas. Uh, we worked with immigrants. These people were um, legal. They had just left the, the uh, security of the border and so forth, and the systems. And uh, they were, all of them were asylum seekers. For people that had just been through probably the major trauma of leaving your whole family and culture, I think anybody, you know, they just, you know, so I decided to start hugging them and mm -hmm. welcoming them, hoping that they would be, and other people started doing that too, that this would be one of their first memories of the United mm -hmm. States is that they're welcome. Our, our whole thing is if human dignity mm -hmm. is, is threatened, how can we go? Yeah. We made pink stuff. hats for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> for the protest. Next time, we should wear one. Yes. We should wear them. We could have worn them today. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Um, as part of our congregation of sisters, 
we have uh, um, Sisters of Nicaragua sponsored an organization they started, it's called Cantera. And it has 29 different kinds of ways they serve people up in the uh, very poor people and up in the mountains and, and education, scholarships for students and all. And then we have a rummage sale on a Memorial Day weekend. If there's something that's something our congregation has really sponsored and where we really see where people's faith, life, and human dignity are threatened, mm. then it's really for me an obligation to be there if I can be there. Mm -hmm. So I have been in different kinds of protests around the country. Nuns on the Bus actually is a bus, okay? Sponsored by Network. Network is a peace and justice lobby group. It's a Catholic Sisters lobby group is what they yes. call it. We love their line. It's yeah. called Inspired by Women Religious, okay? And we have participated in one of their major projects, which is the bus. You know, when you're on the bus, uh, it's like, oh, here, 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 and here. And it's kind of like, what day is this and where are we? Mm -hmm. um, it's not scenic. It's not a touristy thing. You work on the bus. It's designed to work. It has tables. And, you, know, you don't sleep on the bus because mm -hmm. you're preparing for the next day. We got on in Washington, D.C. Okay. Now, nuns on the bus, 10 sisters. We don't know each other when we get on. Claire and I have always said we don't know how we got on. <laughs> we were invited. We don't know how or why, but as soon as that invitation came, it was like, turn that around, we're going. <laughs> okay. I began to realize how many girls wanted to go to college and couldn't because they didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. So then I asked, well, how much would it cost, you know, to, to get to go? Mm -hmm. She said about three, four hundred dollars a semester. Well, it blew me away. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that's nothing mm -hmm. here, you know. And uh, so I, I had some money with me at the time, that, uh, uh, and I gave her almost all that I had. And uh, I said, get her in to the university, into school, and I'll find, I'll find the money for the rest. I knew people that I could probably get some money from and somehow mm -hmm. I would raise money. Then it went from that to the idea of starting a program for girls who wanted to go to the university. Given your ties with Marion University, uh, what advice do you have for Marion students? Travel as much as you can, see the world, get different perspectives, see how how the world's different. Through the Kellogg Fellowship and then through our congregation, having sisters go to Siberia, I have been all to all the time zones except one. And that's such a privilege, I can hardly even think about it. Mm -hmm. Take advantage. Try for a scholarship you never thought you would get. Mm -hmm. Do, when somebody says they're gonna help you or there's a way to do something, something's available, Go, take advantage of it. So make every day count, do things for other people, enrich your life, be, be who you can be the best you. Mm -hmm. My advice would be to uh, become passionate about something that's valuable. Uh, you have to study it, you have to, and study doesn't mean you open up a book, although it would be a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take advantage of the educational opportunities that you have. Really take advantage of them, do what you can do. So get a good start in that. But listen to other people, figure out where, where is your heart tugging? Because if you don't have some passion around what you want to do, and you don't study it, and you don't get the experiences around it, and you don't talk to other people, I think your life could be long and dry. There is this um, picture like of being in a box. You join this kind of life and you're in a box and you're doing it. I mean, I often say, join the continent and see the world. It's amazing when I look back in my life about how many places I have gone uh, to work, how many opportunities I had to do that, how much more open uh, the congregation is, or and I think all congregations mm -hmm. are, to looking at the needs of the world. If um, students have one little inkling that this could be interesting, they may not really want to tell their friends you know, mm -hmm. but you know, there are sisters around here, um, and they could just contact them and go, Hey, I thought about this just a little bit, so tell me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if 
uh, we're, we're a welcoming presence on the campus, you know, mm -hmm. in the sense that that helps too. Mm -hmm. You have to decide where you're going to be and how you're going to um, utilize the lifestyle that you're in to be able to make a difference in the world, to make a difference in the world, improve other people's lives. There's a, a big world out there that needs your help. Help however you can, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I think students are very generous, much more generous than people realize. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the problems that you run into in any kind of a program like this is people think, well, if I can't give, you know, a hundred or I can't give a thousand, then, you know, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I, my little bit won't help. It's like the sisters here who give their quarters from bingo, you know. And it's, that's just not true. And uh, so there, there's a lot young people can do. Another thing I would say is for them in this world today to realize how small the world is and that we're all brothers and sisters. Absolutely. And the color of skin, the type of religion, we are all united. We're the same essence. And I think that young people can respond to that even better than people our age. Young people need to find where their happiness lies. Mm -hmm. Some kind of a spiritual grounding is very, very helpful because you meet challenges, even when you're happy doing what you're doing, you meet challenges that you need to be grounded and to find your joy that's deeper than just the external. Mm -hmm. And I think when we're young, we think it's in the money, we think it's in the adulation from other people, and we find that as we find our true happiness, that it's, it's bigger than that because it's grounded so deeply.